Welcome back. It's time once again. Another episode of OC Spotlight. The only show that takes a look at the most amazing people doing the most incredible things. Right here in our own backyard. And the events that bring them all together. Like the huge, huge event coming up next week. Here at the Orange County Convention Center. The annual National Association of Music Merchandisers, the infamous NAM show that takes over the entire convention center and more for, I guess it's about four or five days. It starts on Wednesday, the 23rd of January, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and into Sunday. And I'm telling you, if you want anything, anybody and everybody in the music business is going to be there, whether they're selling stuff, uh, equipment. Uh, speakers, trombones, trumpets, anything and everything, and all the myriad of amps that uh, are apps rather that go along with it. Uh, and today, as part of our promotion for that upcoming event, we have with us a special guest. Welcome to our show here today. Hello, hi. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I don't want to mispronounce your name, so I'll let you say it and the company you're with, and we'll talk a little bit about what brings you, what's going to bring you down to Anaheim here in a week. Great. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. And uh, my name is Melody Care, and I'm the CEO of Music I Love. Uh, we spell it with L-U-V at the end. Uh, Music I Love is a social musical. Uh, application uh, built on augmented reality to inspire future artists to create, practice, and perform music in a fun, engaging, collaborative environment. And we just thought that NAM show will be a great uh, beginning for our product launch that is happening. So we are launching our product on January 24th uh, in NAM show. Uh, where, as you said, everybody comes together, and uh, we would like to be part of that. If you haven't been there, folks, and I know it's not easy because it's not open to the public, I'm sorry to say. It's an event for the industry only, but what an event party. All the biggest names in music, uh, all the booths have leading rock and roll guitarists and hip-hop artists and new way, new image, you name it. I don't even know what all the trends are called these days here, but musicians come and perform throughout the uh, week at this event at the various booths on the various stages in the various private parties you're going to see the best in the music business there and then this is really where the music business comes together right the people who are creating it used to be just that it used to be you know lines of guitars and people that sold uh, drums or brass instruments and as well as speakers and amplifiers and microphones and all that's still there but it's really branched much bigger than that. This thing has grown as, as the music business has expanded its reach into online and to apps like yours. It's taken on a whole new dimension, don't you think? Yes, absolutely. In fact, um, you know, I believe that it's the uh, um, crossroads for professionals who are seeking new products, new technology, whether it's in recording technology, learning technology, you know, sound, the stage. So it brings the whole product together. We, in fact, we were at NAM show last year. We didn't have a product uh, at the time, but we were eager to learn about what's new out there. Right. And um, this year we are coming back with our product and we are excited again to be part of this uh, show. Well, um, tell me about, you know, where else would you do? I suppose the Consumer Electronics Show would be another kind of venue for this, but it really is, because you're focused on music, this is the once-a-year gathering of the clan for the entire music industry in the music business. And it's right here in Orange County. That's what most people don't realize. I don't know why it hasn't migrated to Vegas or other places, but it's been here for years. It's grown just taking over the entire multi-room uh, uh, convention center over there and all the hotels that surround it. It's, it's become a circus almost over there. Oh, it's really, really amazing. I think, as you said, you know, artists perform. There are a wide range of products out there, and uh, obviously we will be part of that. But I think you also meet um, a lot of influencers, decision makers in, um, in the industry. So if anything to do with music, uh, whether it is application, whether it is learning technology, innovative technology, which we are part of, um, or you are a distributor um, or uh, you want to do 
introduce your products or innovation to a global audience. Right, and this is the one place to launch. Well, and that's I, that leads to my next point, is that this isn't just for uh, music merchants, uh, the guitar centers of the world that sell guitars and instruments and other sorts of things. This is for the entire industry that makes music, and that is not just a professional cadre of people anymore here. That's not just for a few successful uh, performers um, or uh, touring artists. As with your app, everybody is now making a podcast, making music, making uh, videos, uh, the techno- recording at home in their home studios. The technology has been democratized so that it's opened this wave of, of I've never seen such an unimaginable uh, group, a large group of people who now get involved in making their own music. Absolutely, and I think it's actually um, inspired us a little bit as well to uh, bring the technology to our younger generation, yeah. um, uh, and that's where our app comes into the play. So, um, so let's talk about that. What, what you you tease us with things like augmented reality? I'm trying to visualize in my own augmented in my own physical reality what that looks like and what it does. So it's um, really conceptually is really simple um, uh, for uh, to describe. Um, it is uh, basically an application that uh, allows kids or even adults to practice, to create music, and to uh, ultimately perform it in a, not only with their friends but also with virtual bands, uh, guitarists, drummers adding additional sounds, beats, music to uh, what they are creating, and then record it and share it with a lar- with their family, friends, or even a larger audience. Yeah, you, you can create a community as small as your friends and family or as large as the world to listen to your music. Exactly. And you don't need to be a professional artist. You can uh, start with simple songs, simple uh, music, and then build your music and share your music album, which, which could be only audio or your music video with your audience. So how, d- that audience. how does it work? Is it an app I purchase? Is it a physical piece of equipment? What, what is it that, that uh, I, uh, music I love makes and offers and, and brings all this together? Uh, from a user perspective, it's an app that they download on their uh, mobile devices. Uh, it's available right now also in App Store. If you go search for Music I Love with the LUV, you can download it. Okay. Um, and you can um, also, the, the way it works is that you just put it on your mobile devices. We have some emerging technology where you can... Uh, either bring your own song that you were practicing or use our library. Uh, We have technology that can uh, bring and digitize your um, song, and then you can practice it. And we have technology that does polyphonic pitch detection. Oh, my goodness. In a Lehman way, you can basically tell you what your mistakes are live as you're performing. So here you did a note mistake or a timing mistake, and then you can go and perform whatever that you have uh, practicing, even if it could be like four measures in, uh, in our AR environment and that you can play it with your friends who may be playing a different instrument or you can actually add your own accompaniment, bands, orchestra, 3D characters that are your favorites and then create a music video and album and share it immediately on the built-in social media. And what's the AR component of it, the augmented reality part of it? So in effect, I can go on and uh, there's backing tracks that you, probably royalty-free tracks that you supp- supply so I can learn to sing sing along or I can alter them myself or I can bring in my own separately recorded tracks on my guitar, on my drums, on my band or whatever, and I start to work this music out in this app, right? I start It, it helps me improve it. It helps me turn it into a more finished product. And then you're saying that other people can collaborate with me on this as well. Yes. Yeah, so, for example, if I am playing piano and you're playing violin, you, I can record my practice, you can record yours, and then we go into our 
AR environment and join the recording, and as well as we can bring a virtual drummer to play along with us and wow. then create the music that includes all three instruments. And they could be visual. It's actually video that you can create live from your virtual augmented reality environment that you have created. So you're giving me an you're giving me a virtual stage to perform this on or a vir- a virtual way to not just mix the music together but to in, in fact make it an experience something that we can all watch and enjoy. Is this does this get streamed live or is this just something that once it's recorded people can access it and watch or listen to it. At the moment, it is um, the second, um, which is you record it and then you share it, but uh, soon we will be able to even stream it live as to see the experience the way you are seeing the experience. I think that would be mind-blowing. I mean, I, I, I think it's powerful enough that you help people create their own music and share it through all these social media platforms, but to allow people to put on basically a virtual conference or a, uh, a garage band can suddenly perform in front of the world or their friends, um, and, and they don't all have to even be in the same place. It's, it's a virtual stage that you're creating to bring people together and let them perform live. I think that would be mind-blowing. Yes, I think it will be exciting, and we are working on that aspect as well. But what you are going to see in NAMM show this uh, January 24th is the recorded version, which is uh, still very engaging. And we have been testing this uh, in the Bay Area because we are based in San Francisco Bay Area, Music I Love. And uh, we've been testing it with a lot of kids and adults in the past year. And uh, this was based on the research we, which was originally f- uh, funded by National Science Foundation oh, on how to engage. Are you kidding? Wow. Uh, yes, how to engage people to stay in music and love music and don't drop out, just thinking they are not maybe talented or they don't have, um, you know, the perseverance to go through the hard and boring practice that yeah, the music right. goes through. Um, so we applied all the learning into this product, and we've been testing it with a large number of users, and mainly actually kids, um, and they seem to really stay in the music. Our results show that and really uh, increase the time that they practice and be engaged in either some form of creation, practice, and sharing, I think it, it was really a great result that we have seen. So hopefully we can take it to every corner in uh, the country and maybe globally eventually and make uh, music part of uh, everybody's, every child's uh, and that's yeah. really it. We all have dreams. We all think we can sing. And then somewhere along the way, somebody says, you can't sing. Or you're, you're, you're not good enough. And so you drop out. Every little kid loves to sing along uh, and, and make music and pick up something and bang on it and whatever. But somewhere along the way, somebody tells us to shut up or we drop out because it's too difficult. Now, again, over the last 10 years, I'm in my 60s here, when I had my own high school rock and roll band, you know, it was a lot harder to record this stuff and and to and to, uh, and to share it with it. There was no way to share it with the world. But over the last ten years, that's what you see at NAM in general. This home recording technology and this ability to share stuff through the internet, through social media, uh, through places like SoundCloud, where everybody can hear your music now, has just exploded. Everybody's back to making music. So, who do you think is the who do you think's the core target? Who, who do you think's the first logic? I understand anybody could do this, but where are you focusing your main efforts in marketing? Is this a, a way for kids to make music fun and easy and shareable for them? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. So uh, with the, our results show that the product can be leveraged by anybody. In fact, we have seen teenagers use it. We have seen adults be interested in but. Um, Socially, I think the whole company and myself, we, uh, when we started this, we really wanted to make a big difference in um, technology um, because I have a technology background when I graduated since college and I led multiple companies uh, in terms of um, tech industry. Right. But this time I really wanted to make a difference in for what matters the most and what's more important than our future generation. Yeah. So we are really putting this effort to make sure that kids don't drop out of music. And when I'm saying kids, it's anybody under the age of 18. 
and this is our future generation. I want to make them engage, but not engage just as a listener. Be creative. Be a musician. Be say. Don't think that you're not talented. Stay in music and uh, really create what in whatever capacity you can. And, uh, and share it. So you. is, a, and I hope this doesn't offend you, but is this my first impulse is, well, gee, this is a sort of glorified karaoke. It's a glorified sing-along type of thing, and everybody will laugh and have fun, and they'll share it with people. But you're really trying to get to something more serious than that, which is to get people making music and to get better at making music. Absolutely. It has uh, nothing to do with singing. Uh, there are a lot of uh, apps out there that give you a song and you can just sing yeah, along. Right. And we are not at all trying to even compete with those applications or in the same ballpark. We want to make sure that it is more educational than just singing and, and sharing. And it's, it's collaborative. It's a way that you can collaborate with people uh, it, that you don't have to physically be in the same room like you typically do in a band practice here. You're saying that people can record and submit pieces t independently and then this app can somehow weave them together even to something that is visual and, and, and watchable. That's right. So that's exactly what we are trying to do. So they can record themselves and then they would be synchronized the sounds uh, so that they they have that augmented in, in the AR environment. They can get that uh, feeling that they are all played together. And That's got to yeah, be pretty sophisticated because you've got different rhythms and time saving. I mean, you know, when you really get into music, not every, that's why you have a conductor and somebody in front of the, you know, making sure everybody's in the same time and the, and the same uh, pace and you're, you're taking stuff that's been independently recorded and somehow merging it together. I can't imagine how you could do that and make it all match up. Well, it, it is part of our technology that we are using, but also um, we are making an assumption that they are using the app in terms of timing and synchronization, so there is right. a little bit of coordination. I'm going to play at 70 BPM, for example. So right. Don't go too fast. And then in the... So we're all playing the same 4-4, four, four. we're all playing the same exactly, time signatures exactly. and key and everything else here, yeah. Exactly. So that, But because there is a social media, they can coordinate that with each other. They can leave comments for each other, that right. this is what you have to play. And then with a little bit of that and the, our technology combined, I think... We are creating that experience. Again, this is not meant for a professional tool that they would use in the recording studios. It is for everybody to do it at their home. Yeah, get more studio. people yeah. just playing. Get over the barrier saying, I can't make music. Sure you can. And especially if you're younger, don't give up. Don't quit. Don't say I'm no good. Don't say I don't have the time or talent or whatever. Anybody can make music doing something like this. And then the more you get people into it, then obviously a certain percentage of those people get hooked and stick with it and stay in it longer. And you're, exactly. you're feeding the future musicians of the world here. So how big an app do you think this is? I don't know what the marketplace is for apps like this. Is this billions, millions, thousands? I don't know. How many people are you targeting with this application here? So uh, in terms of target audience, I, I think there are published uh, results even from NAM uh, that indicates that, you know, 64% of kids in U.S., for example, we have 75 million kids in the U.S. Wow. are learning music either through schools or private channel, but there is about 50% of them usually drop out within one or two years. Yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and they all think, oh, I'm not very musical, I don't have the pitch or anything like that. But the study actually shows that most kids drop out of music because unlike the sports where you go actually to gym and field and you actually practice you get lessons once a week and then it's on your own yeah. at your home right with coordination to get it done so that's true too to yeah that. so yeah. We, we are targeting anybody any kids and uh, really um, you know you don't need to have any background in music you can pick install our app and start with the easiest songs that you can find and we give you visual aids to um, you know, to figure out what to play, what key to press, for example. And uh, and then if it entices you, then kids then going to say, oh, I want to really learn this. So they can go and get the, you know, class, uh, classes or 
tutors yeah, right. that would get them to the next round. I would think uh, school music programs. I would think independent music teachers. Everybody would love this because it would get more people just having fun making music. And out of that, you've got to get more people who will turn into serious musicians or, or pick this up as a serious life uh, learning exercise and not just something your parents made you do for two years and you quit. Absolutely. Uh, it's right on. And in fact, we were testing it uh, in, a, in a school in Bay Area, and this was with the kids, uh, third grade kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, these kids spent an hour and 15 minutes, about half and half time, on practicing their four measures on recorder, which is a very simple instrument. Yeah, right, a little and sort then, of flute uh, kind of thing. The other half, they were creating the music, and they, they are collaborating entirely. There was not a single time where they were not engaged in this whole an hour and 15 minutes. And we really ran out of time, and it was really a good result just to see these kids engaged in music. Because, you know, one of the things I think back to when I studied, I've actually studied trombone, for some crazy reason, in third grade. I think it was because I was the only tall kid in the class, and they said, here, you're going to play the trombone today. Um, and so I took that on as a task, and my parents groaned and bought the trombone, and I took lessons for, I think, two or three years and finally dropped out. And one of the challenges I had, one of the things that kept me from sticking with it is there was a long time, I'm just trying to make a sound out of the instrument here, and it didn't sound musical. It didn't sound like a song. It was me learning the bass part to some song, you know, dun, 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 dun. And I'd come on my plays, and my parents would say, what's that? I'd say, you know, God bless America. You know, the, the, who knew? <laughs> didn't sound like anything. So I didn't feel like I was performing, and it took, it took a long time before I could play with a group of people. And as you said, I'm trying to do this on my own and stick with it. If there was something that made me feel more immersed in it in the beginning, like I was actually making a song or I was contributing to a song or being part of a, a band or a performance, I think I might have stuck with it longer. But it's that long, dreary drudgery where you're just learning to play notes on an instrument and uh, you don't play much. It doesn't sound like exactly. much. And it may not sound uh, really well. And no. Now with our technology, you can add additional sounds. So if your contribution can be merged with somebody else's contribution or some of the accompaniments and rhythms and sounds that we have for that particular song that you were playing, for example, and then that makes it a different experience. Yeah, right. It sounds like something. I feel like I'm doing something. I'm not just playing four notes over and over again trying to visualize what it'll sound like mixed together with the rest of the orchestra here. Exactly. Well, an amazing. And last question, how did you come up with this crazy thing? This isn't something I don't think anybody's ever thought of before. This, uh, well, it's a long story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, was this yeah. from your own children, your own experience? It, or was, your it was my own daughter at the time. She was, it was a couple of years ago, she was struggling with music, and yeah. now she plays music very well. And, and, uh, but it really showed us that this e uh, issue, um, when we looked at solution for it, we saw that there was no solution to get them really inspired. Uh, and to get them through that first couple of years, at some point when you're good enough, then it sounds like something, and you feel like you're, and you can play it for your friends, or you can play it for yourself, or you can play as part of a, an orchestra, a band, or, or a group. But in the beginning, it's you, you know, screeching the bow across the strings, and it sounds horrible uh, to your parents and to you and everybody else to get past that learning curve to keep you in it long enough so that you can actually start to make music, I think, is the challenge. Absolutely. Well, it sounds like you've come up with I, I look forward to seeing it. I'm assuming this will be at the media preview. There's a media preview on uh, January 23rd where they're going to pick some of the more unusual uh, exhibitors this year, and you guys have been selected to be one of those. Uh, so um, I, I hope we'll see you then. If not, we'll definitely send somebody out throughout the show and stop by and see what booth are you at, what, what area are you at. So we are in booth 10... Uh 100, 10,100, so okay. it's 10100, zero, zero, zero. and we are, I believe we are in hall, uh, between hall B and C. Uh, so it's huge, I mean, now. it takes over, and they have entire halls dedicated to, you know, stringed instruments, or, or brass instruments, or um, guitars, and other things, and then all this, fill it in with all these other 
things that I would have never thought in the music business 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago when we didn't have the Absolutely. internet, we didn't have apps, we didn't have the ability to, to make music in so many different ways here and share it as you're doing. I think it's a fascinating idea and I wish you well. Uh, and it's going to launch Thank this week or this coming week at the uh, NAM show right here in Orange County at the Orange County uh, uh, Convention Center. Um, go to uh, the NAM show. Uh, you can look it up online. I'm sure they have a, a website for this. And uh, what's your website if people want to learn more? Uh, our website is uh, www.musicilove, uh, with L-U-V, the way right. we just write it. Music I Love, L-U-V, okay. Yeah, dot com. Dot and, com. Uh, you can download the app from there, too. And I, it was a ple- I mean, I really appreciate Yes, we will be in media preview and would love to see you and uh, come and check uh, our product. You just show again the diversity of what this show has become. It's not just a bunch of instruments. It's not just a bunch of recording equipment. It's not just a bunch of musicians who use both. It's the whole world that is trying to be creative and trying to find ways to to make music, to share music, to enjoy music, and to to do things they never could do, which is make their own music here, as you're doing. Fascinating stuff. Thank you. All right, well, thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, That'll wrap up another episode of uh, the OC Spotlight right here on Orange County's only community radio station, octalkradio.net.